Hello guys, welcome to my new video. In this video, I will show you my top 10 open source software in 2023, which I am using mostly. So I would say, let's start. The first software I'm using is Solanum. Solanum is a Pomodoro timer, which just keeps track of our work time. So I could start this here. Now it is running for 25 minutes after it. I can take a short break and then we are starting with the next lab with 25 minutes and so on. It's the simple Pomodoro technique. I personally am doing this almost every day to remind me to short breaks and to stay concentrated the whole day, which makes it so great in my opinion. It's a simple timer, but yeah, it's the app I'm using almost every day. So yeah, this one has to be in this video. Let's head over to our next software, which I'm using almost every day. No, I'm using it every day and it is called Thunderbird. Yeah, Thunderbird is a very great mail client. I would say the best mail client in the Linux world. I'm using it on my main machine with about 10 or 15 mail accounts and no mail client does it as good as Thunderbird in my opinion. And with the new updates in this year, Thunderbird got a fresh up in the design, in the UI and has big advantages over the web mail clients I have been trying out. One hint for you, I added a add-on which is very useful and productive in my opinion. It's called Quick Text. With Quick Text you can easily create signatures or some other text formulas which you can easily insert into your email with a single keyboard shortcut, which makes it very efficient for me to answer many mails in short time every day. And I would clearly say without Thunderbird, I would have a very big problem doing all my mail work. Let's head us over to the next application I'm using almost every day. And this is NoCodeDB. With NoCodeDB, you can build databases as spreadsheets. You don't need any coding skills because it is a no code platform. These are very popular these days and you can create some databases, some tables, some table views in it and aggregate and store data and much data because no code B has connectors to, for example, Postgres or MySQL. And you can also import very easily new files such as CSV files. Excel files or Airtable. If you know Airtable, then it's an alternative to Airtable, but it's completely open source and free. I'm hosting it myself. If you want a video about this, just, just write me a comment and you can automate NoCodeDB with other webhooks. You have a REST API. For example, I'm using a Python module for that, which is great, I would say. And um, yeah, you also have a intuitive UI in different views here, the grid view, the Kanban view, the gallery view, but also the form view. So uh, some new users, for example, can insert this form, which is very great in my opinion. And, and I'm using this for my own businesses to store customers, tickets and other data, which is in my opinion, a very great tool but at the current time, sometimes it has small bugs, but these are completely okay. And NoCodeDB evolves itself very much in this year. I started with NoCodeDB at the beginning of this year and NoCodeDB get, got a lot of new features in this year, which makes it just more desirable. You can try it for free online and you can of course host it yourself. So if you want a video about it, just write it me to the comments and I will do it, I think. So, okay, next software is called Nextcloud. I'm using Nextcloud the whole time of my workday because I have every files on my cloud here, because I have every files on my cloud. Nextcloud is a alternative to Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive and other cloud providers because you can host your own Nextcloud on your home or you can use it also for companies. I'm doing this one also for many companies and they are very happy about it because they have their data 
in their own hands and that has in my opinion such a great value. Next to file sharing and the whole file thing I am also using the contacts or calendar here. Okay sorry this one is in German but um, yeah you can create as many calendars as you want. You can sync them with your Linux client or also with your mobile phones which makes it a great alternative to the completely Google or Microsoft services and you stay independent which makes it great. Let us head over to the next application and I'm using this just right at the moment and this is OBS. It's called Open Broadcaster Studio and is a recording software for Linux, Windows and Mac I guess and next to recording I'm also doing live streams on OBS. I also have a live stream event every year but this is all in German. For that I am also using OBS and if you have to record something on your Linux desktops, if you want to make screen recordings, show some guys how to do something or just record a video from <laughs> Netflix or something else, um, you can do this with OBS. And it's in my opinion, a great tool for such these things. It's completely open source, it's free. So yeah, I can highly recommend it if you want to record something. After you recorded some video, you also have to cut these videos and I'm cutting these videos with KDN Live, which is a great video editor. I'm using this every week and it just does a great job. It's completely free. It's also available for Windows, I guess, and the rendering is just very fine with KDN Live. And the video production is quite easy. I wouldn't say for easy videos, for example, for wedding videos, some image films, trailers or short movies. It's great to use. So yeah, I can recommend it for short projects and if you're doing easy video cutting, then this is your tool. Let's head over to another tool I'm just using all the time and this is called Linux Assistant. Linux Assistant is a app I developed myself, which is a daily helper for administrative tasks, has a great search and just helps you out on your everyday work on Linux. You can search many things. For example, you can search for apps, for settings, for your browser bookmarks, for example. You can uninstall software, you can install some software, but you can also do a security check, for example, which checks the security of your system. Let's have a look. Here we see, okay, I don't have any firewall at the moment, so I can press fix. Then it is doing all these things and it is also very transparent what it is doing. You can also see the log what it is doing. And um, now my firewall is active and my system is a bit more secure in this scenario. The best way is Linux Assistant isn't just available for Linux Mint. It is available for Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Mint, LMDE also, Pop OS, MX Linux, Sorin OS, KDE Neon and OpenSUSE. It supports the desktop GNOME, KDE, Cinnamon and XFCE. We have more than 20k downloads and is completely free and open source. And in the next days also Fedora will be supported and I'm very happy to see that coming. Okay, yeah, that was it for Linux Assistant. Let's head over to another app I'm using every day and this is called Bitwarden. Bitwarden is a easy password manager trusted by millions of people. It's completely free in the base version. You have unlimited passwords and unlimited devices and with it I'm syncing all my passwords in the web browser, at the mobile phone or at the Linux desktop. If you don't want that your passwords are stored encrypted online, you can also use KeePass XC, which is also a very easy password manager, but it is using only local databases, which you can, for example, also sync with your Nextcloud. And I'm also using this for passwords, which should stay a bit more secure. Let's head over to the next app I'm using almost every month, very, but it is very important and it is called Pika Backup, which is a very easy backup manager, which is using Borg as the underlying technology, which has all the features you need for backups. You have file versioning, you have compression and also encryption if you want. So yeah, <laughs> everything you need and it's very easy to use here. So 
I can just recommend it to use it. I'm using this with an external hard drive. Every month I plug in my backup device, click on backup now and the rest is happening by itself. It's quite easy and so good. If you don't have a backup routine yet, then it's now time to choose Pika Backup. Let's head over to the 10th app I'm using almost every day and this is for meetings. With Jitsi you can very easily start meetings like in Zoom or Microsoft Teams. So if you need to do a online meeting, I highly recommend you using Jitsi. I personally have a own Jitsi instance with an own Jitsi server for better performance. You can also start a meeting for free, but um, now I guess you have to log in. Feel free to check it out. I'm using this also almost every day for every meeting I do. So yeah, that was it for today. I hope you found this video helpful. Which top 10 open source software projects are you using all the time? Just write it me to the comments and see you in the next one. Bye.